Present. 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 That's okay. All right, Brian. I'm going to call to order the Park Board meeting for Tuesday, April 26, 2016. I need a call to order, and as this is a call to order, and I'm going to have a roll call now. Member Castleman? Present. Member Cipolla? Present. Member Eastwood? Present. Member Harris? Present. Member Howdy Show? Present. Member Seamers? Present. Member Troutman? Present. Chairman Manson? Present. Mr. Heath is absent. Yes. Director Mustoon and the rest of the staff are here. Thank you. Now I'll stand and uh, so make the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, uh, we have a personal appearance. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll have uh, Mr. Rulo introduce this young man for us. Alex Albee. Albee. Albee is here tonight. To uh, He's uh, wanting to do a project down in Recreation Park um, to achieve his Eagle Scout badge. And uh, he's just here to present to you all the give you an idea what's going on and, and uh, let you know what kind of project he's doing. Go ahead, Alex. All right. My idea for a project is a story circle, an outdoor children's play area. I basically want to put a 10 by 10 foot log circle that will be permanent in the ground for um, as the story circle, basically, or if they want, because children like to climb on it and stuff, so it can also be considered that. And I was also planning a smaller circle of movable logs that they can use or whatever that whatever children want to use for it, move it around or imagine things with it. And so it's basically in the I've, my first part of the project is going to be a conservation project to remove hazards from the wooded area where I plan on doing the circle at. And the hazards I saw were rusty bed springs, rusty barbed wire, rusty and torn tin cans. I saw old tires and low branches, which I plan to remove out of the area. And then the next part will be bring the logs in with trailers that our troop has, and then um, planting them there, and basically just all that stuff as it comes in. So I, be, I have pictures of the logs I have. I have 22 trunks in all to use for the project. And so yeah, the basic purpose is just for kids to get time outdoors and enjoy nature and the environment as it is. And, have more activities out there without being indoors playing video games and structured activities from parents just to be kids. Janice. Yes. How large will the circle be? 10 by 10. Melinda. How long do you think it's going to take you to complete? Have you figured out how many hours or days? Well, we have a specific amount of hours I have to have for my Eagle Scout project, but in all, it shouldn't take very long, maybe two days at most to finish the conservation and planting the logs in itself. Brian. Uh, so this picture here obviously isn't the work you've already done. Is yours going to be logs all the way around, or will it be pavers on this end like that too? There will be logs all the way around. And how are you going to secure those to the ground? Are you going to bury them? Um, yeah, just bury them. Yes, sir. That was my question. I was just curious how you're going to secure them down. So, sounds like a good idea. Is there any material cost that we should uh, spring for on this? It, <clears throat> we don't think that there's going to be a whole lot of cost um, on behalf of the staff. Um, I've talked with Alex. Um, if there's something that we need here and there, um, I do have the, the flexibility in, in the current budget right now to help out. Okay. 
Any other questions? Yes, Brian. With just burying them in the ground, how deep are they going to go? And do we have any problem with kids jumping and planting them that they'll start to come loose? Um, I don't think so. Most of the logs that will be buried are big enough that they can't already be moved by the children. Okay. So. And, and I think part of the idea is that, um, you know, he, he's going to have some stationary and then he's going to have some that are not stationary because we want the kids to use their imagination and, you know, reinvent what's there and just for, for their time being down there. Are you going to have any markers to designate that you did this project? Yes, I will. You will? What's that going to consist of? Um, I'm not really sure. Well, I'm, I just know I'm going to put something that says 427 and Alexander Abe and the date on it. Have you ever thought about uh, wood burning the end of the stumps? No, I have not. I think that'd be a pretty cool effect. Yeah. We actually, we might end up putting his marker or even burning in on the this entrance sign that we had talked about during work session. That way it's it's a prominent feature right there as, as they enter. Okay. In there. Thank you, looks good, I like it. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. I hope you do a credible job. Thank you. Okay. All right. Next, we have the acceptance of the minutes from the meeting of March 22nd. I move to accept the minutes from the uh, March 22nd meeting. Do I have a second? I second it. All right. We have a motion to second it. Any discussion? All right. If there is none, I need a vote. Raise your, that'll be by acclamation by raising your hand. <laughs> All right. We have seven four. Do we have any nays? Absence? Abstained? We have one abstain, seven, seven yeses. Well, you can include mine also. All right, the minutes have been accepted from the meeting on March 22nd. Committee reports. Uh, Finance Committee, we had no meeting on that one. Recreation com uh, Committee. Mr. McLean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. In the back of the packet, we do have notes and minutes from that meeting, so you could brief yourselves on what we did, did discuss. I'll do a quick summary on that. The main topics that we discussed were the addition, additions that we've made to programs, sport, some of the sports programs. We added a tournament to the end of the Recreational League Soccer. We added a grade to the volleyball, which I discussed a little bit in the park board meeting last month. So we we discussed a lot of those changes that we're looking at also moving into the tryout and clinic phase of Raymore United Soccer Club which is coming up at the end of May and 1st of June so we started lining out our marketing plan for that and some of the old business that covered where we were moving at where where the soccer club is currently at and where it's we were anticipating seeing it grow and uh, move forward. Uh, under new business, we, uh, I had, uh, or I asked uh, Superintendent Rulo to discuss the baseball project. Baseball project is coming along very well. We discussed some of the uh, side effects of that project and the timeline, but with them ex um, being on schedule and a little ahead, it actually benefited us for our program, so we discussed that. And then we had some member comments, as you can see, and most of those we're addressing and going to be following up with. So are there any questions at this time? No questions? All right, thank you, Mr. McLean. Thank you. All right, there was no grounds committee meeting. Uh, we're on the staff reports. Recreation Superintendent, Mr. Rulo. Uh, pardon me, Mr. McLean. Didn't mean to demote you. <laughs> Thank you. I just want to hit on a couple of uh, topics on the recreation side. Um, first off, I want to talk about the recreational baseball and softball program. This year we hit an all-time high. We, we 
grew last year substantially. This year we grew again. It's in my staff report, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about it. We have over 670 participants. The, it is the largest program that the department offers. Um, with the addition of six competitive teams, we have over we have close to 70 teams using our fields in the spring. Staff is currently working on, uh, we, we had our coaches meetings. We've worked with coaches on getting practice spots, which are getting very tight with the 10 fields we have. We are using two of the school fields, um, Stone Gates, small little T-ball area, and then Timber Creek as well. So thank you to the school district uh, for the continued co cooperative agreement that we have there. And um, we are looking at putting schedules together over the next couple of weeks. So schedules for games for the recreation side will be starting around May 23rd. I do have one correction. Uh, the adult softball, we were closing that registration at the time of the packet. We had eight. Uh, today we locked in our 12th, so we hit our full capacity of spring softball, which has not been done in quite a few years. I think it was back when Mr. Mustine was um, running the sports programs, but it hadn't been since I'd been here. So that was actually, a, it's actually a little nice because of the delay of the uh, field renovation project actually allowed some of those teams to come back and start. So we're looking at a good season and it starts this Sunday. And then finally, I just wanted to touch on uh, recreation coordinator uh, Keith is working with the concessions, uh, the operations of that. We're gearing that all up with that. Superintendent Rulo had uh, himself and some of the parks crew installed a new PA system. We had some safety money allocated to us last year. At the end of the season, we put in a PA system for safety with the weather like we anticipated earlier today and are and anticipating tonight. It allows our staff to clear the fields quicker, be able to make announcements emergency it, for emergency reasons or any other reason that we need to contact everybody at the uh, complex. So both baseball and concessions stands have PA systems and are getting ready to be fully operational. That's what I have for at this time. I will entertain any questions. Brian. Yeah, you said both concession stands, the, both baseball? Memorial Park is being held off right now. That is on the schedule, but um, Mr. Rulo might have more on it. I know we were looking at, we had some issues with where they needed to go. So you're talking about the two at Rec Park, yes. soccer and baseball? Yes. Okay. Yeah, the, the concession stands uh, was built a little bit different up at Memorial Park, and um, it's not as easy to install these things. Um, the soffit isn't strong enough to hold them. So uh, uh, my crew leader and myself are trying to figure out what's going to be the best way to hook these up so when they stay up and uh, are useful. So hopefully have them up here in the next couple weeks. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right, Park Superintendent, staff report. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, I did uh, supply a written report, but just wanted to key on a, on a couple, a couple little things. Um, like um, uh, John had mentioned, the the baseball project is going very well. We're hoping to finishing that up here in the next week to week and a half. Um, probably would have been done this week without the weather, but um, we can't complain too much because we've had great weather throughout the whole thing. Um, I have been working not only with, with Alex Obey, um, working on his Eagle Scout, but also another one, my, uh, Matthew Rhodes. Um, we are working on doing a little bit of re-landscaping to the small islands um, at Rec Park in the back south parking lot. Um, basically, as weeds in those, we want to take them out. We're going to plant some um, native grasses, um, probably some uh, little blue stem or something, be about two to three foot tall, blow in the wind, kind of kind of to resemble uh, in, a, in a way the Royal Stadium, how they have all those grasses blowing out there. So been doing that. And um, park staff is pretty much on their summer routine um, of mowing, cleaning restrooms, and uh, maintaining ball fields. So um, hope, uh, 
here in the next week or so, uh, they'll be on their summer hours also. Um, and then the last thing I just wanted to key on real quick is uh, we were able to uh, install some irrigation, um, manual irrigation down at the soccer fields. We're hoping that this is really going to uh, um, uh, put an extra um, plus, whatever you want to say, to our soccer fields. They're in very good condition right now. Um, this rain the last week's helping out a ton. Uh, we'll be able to fertilize, we'll be able to aerate, we'll be able to do a lot more things and seed at different times. So hopefully this is gonna, gonna keep, uh, keep our soccer fields up and going. So I'd like to entertain any questions. Yes, Linda. Mine's not a question, but I'm so glad you got irrigation in the soccer fields. They've needed it for a long time and I'm sure it'll make them look a lot better and healthier. Hope so, that, that was the plan, so. Brian. Certainly not the permanent irrigation you wanted. I do know that. We've had that discussion in the past. But I'm curious, did you where you did you run that water line? That that picture of the ditch, I can't tell where it's at. Is that coming out of the shelter? Uh, no, it actually um, we had a we have a an existing irrigation line that goes to baseball. Um, and basically they're just quick couplers um, that are in the ground outside of the fields. We tapped into this one that Years ago, we used to use big cannons to water out at, soft, out at soccer. Um, we just extended this irrigation up. There's no, there was no uh, messing up any fields at all. Um, there's stationary um, quick couplers that we can just pop open the irrigation box, plug in a fire hose. We run about um, 50 to 150 feet of hose and have one major cannon, water cannon, and one smaller water cannon. And, Pretty much, we can water every field with just two, um, two of those or those two cannons. So, we're hoping that uh, when you play the wind in the summertime, um, it may not take too long to uh, manually move these. So. Nice, awesome, good Thanks. job. All right, no other questions. Thank you, sir. Uh, Parks and Recreation Director Mustang. Thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to. Uh, basically say thank you and congratulate my recreation staff for the touch a truck event over the weekend it was very well attended very well programmed uh, my kids loved it and uh, if you've not taken your kids out there you should do that next year it's it's fantastic i would like to also comment that uh, we have submitted an application a grant application for a memorial park trail that is currently in our cip that uh, the application, the staff report is in the back of this packet. Uh, we, we mailed that and postmarked it last Friday, so we hope to have a favorable uh, response to that later this fall, and I will keep the board posted on that. A couple other things. We have uh, peaked or reached over 1,000 uh, followers on our Facebook page, which is uh, more than doubled since uh, this time last year. So. One, one of the goals that I had set for myself, we've, we've reached that. So again, kudos to Jerry and John for, for staying on top of that and doing excellent post and good information on that. And a couple things about uh, signage. Uh, thank you to the Public Works Department, Patrick and, uh, and uh, Steve Welch and, Al and Albert for uh, helping us put some signs up for Moon Valley Park. It's always been hard to describe to people where it's at and how to get there and they, they hooked us up with some signs so we hope to make that a little easier and usable facility back there. And then in response to, we always get every year um, comments and suggestions on when we open restrooms, when we don't open restrooms. We have a pretty much, pretty standard policy. What we did this year is we, we created some, uh, some signs that basically lay, that, lay out those uh, r rules for why and when we open and maintain those facilities down there, and we put them in, in where all the public restrooms are just for informational signs to help people understand why we do what we do and the, the reasons why they're locked in February on a 70-degree 70 de 70 day, things like that. So uh, you'll see those things out there. We hope that that will be a, a good customer service, you know, addition to the to park experience. And again, just a reminder to the, the folks out there that the legacy program is up and running. We, we are selling and, and taking donations for memorial bricks, picnic, uh, uh, let's see, honor bricks, memorial benches, uh, tribute trees, those things. We've sold two benches already that are on order and uh, we're pushing five or six honor bricks right now, which we hope to install later this fall. So 
if anybody's interested in that, it's still there. And that concludes staff report. I'll take any questions. Yes, Melinda. Um, seeing your picture of the 1000 reach that has the uniform in the back. I would love to see a picture like on Facebook or something that kind of shows off our uniform that we have for that. I assume that's already done and on its way. I've just never seen a picture of it and I think that, it'd be great advertisement. Too. The actual uniforms that mm -hmm. the teams are wearing? Yeah. That's coming. We just did a photo shoot with that oh, uh, a week good. ago. You guys are so on it. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there. Anyone else? No other questions? All right, thank you, sir. All right, no old business. We'll move on to new business. Uh, item A, Festival in the Park. This is an alcohol request. It's an action item. Mr. Mustang. Thank you, sir. This is a uh, standard request from the festival committee to serve alcohol during their annual festival in the park in the fall. Uh, this is to stay in compliance with the policy in place. They, they request, the, the steps for the request is that they, they ask you, they submit this application, it goes before the council. Upon approval of the council, they submit their request uh, for their state liquor license and things of that nature. So this is just procedure to, to get that portion rolling. Once uh, it's gone past this committee tonight, then we'll take it to city council in May and uh, proceed with the uh, uh, getting those those folks ready to go for their festival this fall. Any questions? All right. Since it's an action item, I need a board vote. Any motion? Yes, Brian. I move to accept the uh, alcohol in the um, the alcohol request submitted by the uh, Raymore Festival. Second. All right, the motion's been seconded. All right, all those, in, any discussion? Yes, Brian. Yeah, I got uh, one question. There's nothing in here specific about uh, security, yet in our alcohol policy, we have a minimum security ratio. I, I just wanna make sure there's not gonna be any kind of conflicts there. No, there's not. Typically, they have uh, off-duty off uh, police officers helping volunteering in that event. Okay. And the question is, does city, city requires that also, correct? Yes, sir. It, under the, the last section, the committee further acknowledges on, on under item B uh, that security uh, must be present. So they have acknowledged that and uh, we'll staff that accordingly. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All right, all those in favor, raise your hand. Passes unanimously. All right, this is item B. This is the alcohol in the park policy review. This is an action item also. Mr. Mustine. Thank you, sir. In keeping with our uh, monthly program of reviewing policies that we already have in place, this will be the first time we look at the alcohol in the park policy. Felt it uh, fitting given that we just approved an application for that, so I thought we would take a look at it. I have made some suggestions. By no means are they recommendations to you. They are just suggestions of things that we can take a look at. If the board is uh, content with the policy as is, uh, we can just uh, move forward with a, a vote to leave it as is. If uh, you like the suggestions or want to make any, we can discuss that. and. Uh, have a motion and, and make those recommended changes on that. And at that point, I'll take it to uh, the city manager and eventually the city council if deemed necessary for that. So just to highlight the couple changes that I've made within the policy on uh, page three of the policy, I, there's a couple changes. Uh, number eight, notification of park neighbors. The original policy, made mention that the Parks and Rec Department would notify the neighbors of the existing area or the area of where the event would take place. I just felt like um, that should be the duty of the, the applicants to, to make notice, especially the way it reads is that we're supposed to do it two weeks before they make application. Well, in my mind, we don't know when they're going to apply, so how can we notify people two weeks ahead of time? So. 
I just thought a, a quick change of language on that and, and put that responsibility on the applicants to, to make note of that. We can also add the language that once approved by the park board, the applicant must notify those neighbors. You know, we, we can change the language however the, the case may be, whatever you guys would feel. I just felt like that was one thing that we could do. But again, the, the policy's been this, this way for several years, so there is no need to change if you don't want to. Uh, the second change is under, uh, under nine, number nine, item C, I just changed the language, kind of simplified that a little more. Uh, since this policy was written, the, the nature of the way the, the consumption of alcohol during these events has kind of changed. It used to be it had to be in an enclosed area like the tennis court under the fencing, and now they are, it, as long as they're within the, the area of the festival or the event, they can walk and, and, and go about holding a beer or whatever the case may be. So I just changed that language to reflect what's actually occurring on the park. And with that, uh, any discussion, I'd be happy to answer any questions and. Go ahead, Michelle. So they're not required to stay like in the corral now to drink? Not to my knowledge, no ma'am. Hmm. Brian. Uh, all right, so a couple of things. One, number eight. Have we ever had anybody respond to anything we've ever sent out on notification of neighbors? My suggestion is we just remove number eight and forget about it. We do it here. We do it through city council. If that's not enough notification, I don't think we should put the extra burden on somebody to notify every single neighbor that's within that serving area to, to be notified. I think it's kind of a waste. I mean, I think we did it as being real conservative when we first created this policy. At this point, I don't think it's necessary, so I would suggest removing it. Uh, C, the location of consumption makes sense because, yeah, I think it was two years ago now we decided not to pin them in the tennis courts anymore uh, and we let them wander around. The only other one I think we should take a look at is number four, the security ratios. Who, who's going to count number of people that are there and what happens if you get to 500 people? Are you just going to call somebody in? I think that ratio doesn't make sense. I think you should have security. And I don't know if you just say a minimum of two people. We do say a minimum of two people, so I figure we just leave it at that and not worry about the ratio line either. And to me, that just seems too hard to figure out and too hard to uh, police. police, for lack of a better term. Otherwise, uh, I th most everything still seems to make sense and it doesn't seem like it's too hard or too burdensome on anybody. All right, is any other ex uh, questions or discussion on this? Jenny. On this uh, uh, update on the 9C, I was just worrying We don't monitor. That's the reason for the security. Two security guards for the entire festival. That's why we're here. That's why we're talking two, about it. The idea behind. Although I wasn't here, it's my understanding. The idea of allowing them to to not have to be in the tennis area is that it was separate from the event. They weren't getting the the attraction that it they were hoping it would be. And so it really wasn't, it wasn't profitable and it wasn't enhancing the experience of the event. So, you know, we can, we can make a change if however you, you feel necessary. If you want to increase the security, that, that's, that's up to the, this board. Brian. Yeah, Jenny, if you, if, if, I'll give you some background. So first we, some people on, on the park board, I think some people maybe city council were nervous about allowing alcohol in our parks, period. Oh. It's public park. So we went around about that, I think missed one year before we finally kind of came up with this policy to say, all right, this is pretty controlling and we limited it to the tennis court in, the, in a uh, fenced area, right? And the tennis court was easy one. There was one way in, one way out, and they just blocked one way with the server. So you really had one way in and out. Worked okay for the first year, it was new. Nobody really knew what was going on. The second year, I think it was the second year, it was cold, it was, 
bad. It was just cold. Nobody wanted beer. It was cold. The third year we did it, still in the tennis court, uh, we had added, I believe, we had added the little um, stage there for at the at the uh, shelter. So the band was playing. Well, you couldn't really enjoy the band. You were off on the other side of the trees from it. Plus, if you had family, the kids couldn't come in. So only adults could come in. So if your kids were somewhere, you were stuck without your kids. Well, so that was the third year of doing it with zero <laughs> incidents whatsoever. So we thought we'd give it a try. And I think we're three years in, maybe two years in. And still haven't had any issues, right? I, I, you know that that's why we open it up, and we you can you can go now if you want while your kids are riding rides. You can go hang out over there, drink a beer. If you want to come in front and enjoy the band, you can do it. Uh, if you want to walk down and visit the vendors, you know we kind of are treating people like adults and kind of letting them do it. I don't think people are out there to party hardy right so since uh and and so we really haven't had an issue that's that's how this has kind of evolved over the years is is it's is it's come about but uh i think until we have an issue i don't think there's any need to start putting a hammer down on people i'm going to give you beer anyway but there is a copy in the chair this must be we'll add that uh our, our police department does patrol in addition to the festival committee. So they have their, uh, their RTVs out there. Usually they have a couple of the officers on bikes. So there's a pretty heavy presence of uh, police and security out there. All right. Mine is, what we're going to, uh, as far as security goes, setting a minimum would be what we should do. You're right, a head count would be impractical because at any given time you can't be sure how many people are attending. But we can set a minimum to ensure that uh, the patrons are uh, properly looked after and that if there are any difficulties that they can be addressed without uh, any, well, hopefully without any additional problems. So if two is not acceptable, we can go to three as a minimum requirement and just leave that as it is. And that as Jenny pointed out, we can address this on an, uh, we're going to address this on an annual basis anyway. And if it needs to be changed, we can do so. But what we should do if, as this is an action item, is if everyone agrees, we can eliminate section number eight mm -hmm. from the policy. We can go to section 9C and leave that as it is for the area and then we can go to the security section under four and increase the minimum to three if we want to. Anyone uh, have any point of views on this? Jenny. Um, I, I think having been given that background information then <clears throat> the two that you have here I think to say that there's one for every 200 why don't we just say a minimum of two period amen um, and just delete that one line. And then since you already have made it clear that the, our police are out there, they'll call in more assistance if they need it, right? So that kind of covers it as is. But I think that one to every 200 people in attendance, I think that sets us up for if there was a problem, if there were 500 people there at, at one point in time. Mr. Musty. Yes, sir. Um, under item four, under security, just to be clear, what we'll do is we'll we'll take out the line starting at the word ratio of one security guard to every 200 people in attendance and uh, just eliminate that that little phrase right there leave it at two I will uh, talk with the chief Zimmerman make sure she is comfortable with that phrasing uh, we can go ahead and, and make the action on of tonight on that and then I'll address this with uh, chief Zimmerman if she has some concerns then we can bring it back next month to address the her concerns Brian you let the lady go first. Thank you. Thank you. So kind. Down. So if we do one for every 200, are they just going to guesstimate then on a Friday night? We usually have 1,200 people there, so we need, and that'll just require them to have. No, he said he's going to keep the 200. I thought you said you were getting rid of the, just the ratio part. So you're getting rid of the whole number thing altogether. So we're only thinking we're going to need two, two, I mean, because that's putting the brunt back on the police We're requiring them to provide two in addition to what our own police department <coughs> uh, presence is out there. 
And what I'm suggesting is that, well, we can do this and then I will discuss it with the chief and make sure she's comfortable with that number given her experience with the festival. If she recommends doing anything different, then we'll come back next May or next month and address that. Because um, I would rather put the brunt of security on the organizers instead of taxing our, you know, I mean, maybe she's already knows, you know, she's gonna have, you know, calculate how many cops she's gonna have there anyway, but to me it should be on them. It does say a minimum, it doesn't, but what we're doing is we're removing the required minimum per person, so. Right, but then wouldn't that just, oh, well, only re we only required to have two, so we're only gonna have two instead of, well, we normally have to have six. But who's gonna set the maximum or the, co the correct amount? You know, how, how is that gonna be set? Because otherwise, if it was me, I'm gonna only hire two. I mean, that's what the minimum is, so. You know, why would you ever hire more? Why would you pay that? We can table this. I can talk to Chief and see and, and get a ratio number that she's comfortable with and would recommend I and bring it back if, that, if that's what the board desires. My, uh, my thoughts on that is I agree with Melinda on one thing, that the organizers need to be responsible for a certain amount of their security. When you put in that, you can't expect the police to cover any, well, if there's incidents that take place, that takes those officers out of the line. They have to, for example, an arrest, there's transport, and you're losing those officers as a duty call. That means, depending on the number of personnel they have on call at that particular time, that puts those, that puts the number of elements down. In other words, it reduces the call, uh, increases call load per element left. It uh, puts a greater strain on the officers that are on duty at that time to cover for those that are out. So, Basically, I'm a firm believer if we eliminate the ratio, which I believe is it's not a very uh, good means of determining security because of the headcount problem, that we should go to a practical minimum. And I, would, I have no problem deferring this, tabling it, and having the input from the chief as one thing, but I also believe that if we do go to a minimum, I don't believe two is adequate. Not as not with serving alcohol. So, if we what we can do is table this. When is the uh, we can table this for the next meeting. In the meantime, we can have input from the chief. I want her. Uh, I definitely want uh, her to understand it. If under no means do we want to put a strain on person uh, police personnel for this event. That. Uh, their services to the citizens at large, and if the event organizers can cover most of the security on this, we should have them ho do so. So, her, uh, we do need the input from her. I believe that would only be fair in assessing this. Does that agree, Brian? Mr. Mustine, can I ask you, do they hire private security or do they use the police force for their security? They do hire off-duty officers. They hire off-duty officers, but PD's there anyway, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. Do we know what the uh, head count is or has been or averages at the festival at any point? Say four or 500 a night, probably. Four or 500. Okay, so even our minimum ratio, we were really only talking three at most. The other option, correct, the other option we could do is just leave number four as is, make the other changes, then I can talk to the chief, and if she recommends changing that, I can bring it back to the board. Let me ask you a question. Does the department have a say over security on this matter? Does it, do the organizers have to clear that to the police department also? This policy. Just our policy? This policy is what deems then, then. Under that consideration, I'd recommend four be or be uh, left intact as it is right now. That's what I recommend. Were we not going to table this? I'm sorry. Well, we can table it, or we can just leave four alone and proceed with eight and nine. Brian. Yeah, I move to accept the Raymore Parks and Rec alcohol policy for outdoor facilities with the addendum of removing section eight and changing section nine C as presented. Do I have a second? second. Or discussion? I have a second. question. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the definition of designated activity areas of the event? 
That would be the carnival area. Okay. D just the area within where activities are not walking off off the sidewalk, taking your open container out on the sidewalk, walking back home, things of that nature, being in the vendor booth area, the carnival area, the stage under the shelter, where the activities are organized and structured. Okay. Yeah, there's so much on-street parking, people arriving there, that there's invariably going to be some carryway of uh, some concern if you don't limit it very clearly. It's covered in a letter, isn't it? Yes, the sir. The areas designated for service of alcohol is covered in a letter and that yeah. no alcohol should be, uh, can be served outside of, or consumed outside of that area. It is the board's discretion. The letter is the application to do that. If it's not defined within that letter, the board okay. can deny application right. based on the policy. But this letter has been standard for this event since the inception of it, so. Okay. Michelle. So an organizer, July 4th, the carnival, the amphitheater that's coming to Hawk Ridge, any of those can be rented for a activity and alcohol can be. So if we've got like all these parks we're getting going and we're getting bigger and there's four activities going on on one night, how do we make sure all of that's covered? They have to abide by this policy. First of all, they also have to rent the park and the facility themselves. So the, the step one is getting the facility rented through us so they have exclusive rights to use it. Step two is application of selling alcohol at the event. I just want to make sure if we've got four or five parks having activities at one time, our police are not everywhere trying to police everything that is actually that is up to you guys I'll, however i will say the the reservation of those parks is on us to make sure we don't book f five facilities on one night and expect us to do that so we do have some control over what we what we reserve i have a point of order have we had a second yes we did? so we have not had a second i, I second it i did Eric did. Right. I heard it. D well, then, well, all right. The motion's the motion's been made. Yeah. Motion seconded. To delete and seconded to delete number eight. You've had discussion. Except nine C as written, and that's the extent of that motion. Now, is there discussion prior to the vote, Jenny? All right. In that case, as it stands, for the to amend the policy, removing section eight. Having 9C accepted as presented and no other changes, all those in favor, raise your hand. That's the motion. Raise your hand. I don't know. I thought we were still in vote. Yeah, call for a vote. I'm calling for a vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? All right. You have one opposed and eight in acceptance. It passes. Okay, Michelle, what do you have, dear? It's just important work as a team up here and not make it a zoo and laugh at each other and point. Just let's get along and do it professionally. Okay. Item C, Recreation Park Activity Map. That's an action item. Yes, Mr. Mustang. Thank you, sir. This is an item that I, I wanted to bring forth just to give you guys an opportunity to see some of the stuff that we're wanting to do and give you some input on it. Uh, what I want you to keep in mind is that the, these signs here are to enhance the experience of, of the park when you come down. They're wayfinding signs of Recreation Park is exactly what it's titled. It is Recreation Park. There's a lot of stuff going on. And if you're from out of town or you, you're not 
aware that we just put in a disc golf course or that we have a natural play area or even Moon Valley's on the back side of Recreation Park. We just wanted to present that and utilize a kiosk that basically sits empty for the most, most of the time and just kind of put a sign out there like an amusement park would have where you are here, this is where everything's at. And uh, so we wanted to, number one, utilize that, that kiosk with uh, just something fun, something inviting there. On the back side, though, we wanted to include an additional sign of just the park rules, the general rules. The only time those rules are posted are on the entrance drive as you're driving through. So if you're not looking and reading them, you have no idea what's going on. So we wanted to update and put some put general basic rules. A lot of people don't know that you can't have go-karts out there or drive your RTVs or anything like that. And so we want to make that posted. So a lot of times when rules are posted, people police themselves. And, and so we wanted to do that and just make use of that area. Another sign we wanted to, to do and, and, and put up is a welcoming sign in front of the soccer complex. The baseball complex has the RYAA memorial sign. Soccer has a sign on that kiosk, but it really, the kiosk faces the playground and doesn't, isn't really near the soccer. So we just wanted to put up, a, it's what I would call a temporary permanent sign. It can be taken down anytime we want, but we're gonna put it up to leave there as long as the soccer complex is there, we're using it at that facility. Something to welcome. What we're anticipating and hoping is that we have a lot more out of town teams come. So we want to have a, a frontage of our soccer complex right there that kind of welcomes people. So those are, those are some of the ideas that we wanted to do. I, I just wanted to bring it to you guys tonight, get your opinion on it, get your approval so that we can move forward and, and, and put some stuff up that just enhances that experience when you go to Recreation Park. And I'll take any comments. Any questions? Melinda. So on this, um, or is this something that you're going to be able to move or change or do whatever as, um, I'm assuming the soccer fields, we move them every once in a while or, and this will be a sign that we can. It's temporary permanent. Okay. And then is it possible to. to stay till we move it. <laughs> but it's, it's going to be something that it's not going to be a major expense to change that. No, it, it'll be on probably four by four or six by six cedar post and a metal sign. So we can take them out anytime we want. Okay. Um, and then is it possible or would it be advantageous to put the um, disc golf holes individually so that, I mean, we talked about already needing something so they knew where each hole is. But well, ideally. Is it not necessary the, on that? the locations of where the kiosk Yeah. It, the kiosk has a map. That's why I did. I, I was general on where the front nine and the back nine were on this map. If you go there, then each front nine and back nine has its own kiosk with maps and okay. and that's part of the disc golf project that we will complete is actual whole signage so I think it'll be well well signed when we're when we're done okay Brian I move to approve the uh, rec park signage at a budget amount of one thousand one hundred dollars I'll second it all right we have a motion that's been uh, for approval and second any discussion? Michelle? Okay. Melinda. I just want to say it looks really nice. I like the way this is drawn up, laid out. It's neat and clean and looks good. Thank you. All right. We have a motion made and second. All those in favor? Raise your hand. Pass unanimously. All right. Public comment. Uh, we have no public tonight, unfortunately. Um, board member comment. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to go down by order. Uh, I'll start with you, Mr. Harris. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say I did participate in Jog With Your Dog. Love the event. I always love the event. I love the puppies. Good time. The second one, I did not get to go to Touch a Truck, but I did see the pictures on Facebook, and it looked awesome. Uh, I emailed Jerry today about something else, and I mentioned that. And I don't know how you get all those trucks there, but uh, it looks awesome. It looks awesome. Uh, another thing I've been thinking about for a while, is it possible those three uh, statues we got in the roundabout outside Rec Park, is it possible to get concrete risers to raise those up out of the uh, – 
foliage that's in front of it. I know a couple people made the comments that they're so short you really can't see it. And I didn't know if we could get just, I don't know, concrete post just to raise them up so they're visible above the foliage. Let me take a look at that. I'm, I'm pretty sure those are in stone, in concrete, they are. because they put them in the ground first, mm. and then we made them go up with concrete. Um, it may be a, a, a situation where we just need to go in and trim the foliage back, or if we have to replace yeah. the what's in there. It's been in there for five years, so yeah. let me take a look at that. Okay, and then the last thing. Uh, can you look at city, or you probably know what it is, on digital signage? Because we're talking about like these kiosks at Rec Park, which is good for where it's at. But I envision us getting some digital signage either outside Rec Park or on the new rack, what I'm calling the rack, the activity center, that we can flash baseball signups now. We can flash touch of trucks coming. We can flash this. We can. Uh, they got some digital signage now. I mean, you guys have seen the billboards there, and I'm not saying anything obviously that big because that's huge, but. They're fancy now. They're basically LCD screens. You could put pictures up of an event, and 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 really, f for what I would consider relatively cheap, make it look really really nice. And and instead of putting one sign up that says "Soccer's here," you could put a sign up that says "Welcome to the soccer," you know, for whatever tournament. And then you pop it up says, "When you're coming back," you know, and we sell advertisement between games. Go visit Dairy Queen, or you know, go see Minsky's, or or whatever. We have that. Uh, possibility and I don't you know just to start thinking about that probably should have put it as a CIP type so I was about deal, to tell you um, we I can, just yeah, now we can look at it, it but now it, I'm throwing it at you yeah we can look at the uh, yeah. some pricing on that and then discuss it in the budget committee yeah for CIP awesome yeah. thank you can't promise you that it would work but we can still look at it and see I mean I just want to know is there a size limit is there a height limit is there a brightness limit some of those can get really bright, and if we're not putting it really tall and you're doing that roundabout and you're staring at that light, man, next thing you know, somebody's driving over the curb, and uh, I couldn't see. Okay. So I just want to know, and maybe it's better to put it up on the rack, on the building, right? It draws eyes towards that. should be visible, plenty visible from the street. Just farther away, you probably have, might have to make it a little bit bigger. So, we can start looking at that. Yeah. All right. Jenny? No comment? Okay. Steve? Nothing. All right. Sheldon? Uh, I'd like to float something that may affect planning at some time in the future. After the Reimagine Raymore series, there was a fourth get-together here that involved seniors, uh, and there was quite a bit of interest. I don't know if anybody's been contacted individually or as, as a group, but there was quite a bit of energy in the room about the city, including seniors as an element in future planning for programs and activities. I will say that Mr. and Mrs. Turnbow are very interested in it. There was, uh, I think, Councilman Barber was there. Uh, there was a representative of planning and zoning. And I think that as we go forward, we're probably gonna have to plug that in uh, to, in terms of design and program themselves. But just a heads up, it's something that's coming towards us as time passes, as the projects go forward and the funding goes forward, we're going to have to think about including at least a senior concept in whatever we do. Mr. Mustang. I believe you're talking about the Community for All Ages uh, meeting that we had. I've been assigned to that task force, and I know uh, Coordinator Keith it will be going to one of the trainings through Mark on uh, programming for that. So I think you'll see more of that coming ahead through the city. Just a concerted effort through the city on that. Right. Melinda. I wasn't here last month, so I wanted to take the opportunity to thank the citizens of Raymore for voting yes on this uh, geo bond. It is going to be a lot of fun. I think there's some exciting stuff coming to Raymore, so thank you and thanks for trusting us to make some good decisions. All right. Michelle. Eric? I'm good. All right. My final comment will be on that uh, policy in Section 4. Ms. Mustine, I still think we need to have that reference through to Chief just to be, uh, be sure that they're comfortable with it. 
The other thing is also I'd like to thank the citizens of the city for the vote they gave. It's certainly going to help us and help the city and the parks. And finally, I want to thank staff. They really do an exceptional job. I know they tolerate me at times. And their input is very critical to how we function as a board. And we can't say thank you enough. All right. Do I have a motion for adjournment? I move we adjourn. Second. All right, motion's been second. All those in favor? Raise your hand. All right. This board meet, park board meeting is adjourned.